I'll probably stand here. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Martin. Uh, I'm going to talk about space for the game. Uh, yeah, let's let's get in it. Uh, so, uh, these are like stories from the <coughs> development of the game. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a very small game, uh, just by two people, and there's no budget, no publisher, but it has been in development for a long time. So, across that long time span, has accrued. Um, a uh, collection of interesting tidbits. So these tidbits is what we are going to be looking at today. Uh, so here is a yeah, quick overview. Uh, so what's what's planned? And uh, yeah, I'll start with disclaimer, another one uh, that was not before disclaimer. So uh, then what is actually space rig? Just uh, so you get the impression what I'm talking about. And then there are going to be like uh, one, two, three, ten things uh, from the development of the game. And then I guess I'll, uh, I, I, I hope I won't talk too much, and then uh, you give a chance to ask ask me anything. Uh, yeah, this is the disclaimer part. <clears throat> so if you came here uh, wanting to get something valuable out of this, uh, yeah, you you will know you you won't and get anything uh, out of value because it's like uh, just a collection of uh, you know these lists on the internet. Top things. Ten things uh, that will make you scream. I don't know, like something like that. That's 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 something like sort of uh, things what you would expect, just less exciting and less uh, screaming using. So it's a it's a it's a talk. Uh, yeah, uh, no game of advice here. Yeah, really, no marketing advice. Uh, no like financial management programming. <coughs> any sort of advice. Uh, uh, seven uh, years is a very long period in the game dev, and across that time, a lot has changed, so basically useless. Uh, yeah, the uh, best way to describe a game uh, is to show a trailer, and that's like three minutes of your life and three minutes of my life, let's just go. I'll stand here awkwardly. special. Nobody can do everything. Use your skills to work around your weakness. I know it's a lot to ask. Forgotten and abandoned, this cosmic wasteland of derelict stations and destroyed ships is dangerous. But you must find the fuel chip and do whatever you can to get it. Sort of, sort of game. Uh, you may know Fallout or uh, I don't know some other uh, computer game uh, like <coughs> equivalents. Not all RPGs are created equal, so Fallout, of course, is above all other RPGs. So uh, yeah, so the main idea here is the number. Do I count? No, I don't. So number uh, like three, uh, non-linearity and freedom. So that's the like distinguishing thing about the game. So uh, there is just set an objective. And things you can do. That's uh, like that's the main thing about the game. That's it. And uh, yeah, yeah. Let's let's get to the tidbits. Uh, so uh, the first fun fact about uh, Space Rock is that it was a learning method. Because I was well, not exactly let go, but like my end, uh, my employment in the company uh, ended, uh, whereas like before, and I was working with Action Strip, uh, with the Flash games. Uh, for a while, and uh, I decided to pivot to web dev, to front end, to what well, you know, and you know, I need JavaScript, well, <coughs> and TypeScript uh, later. But uh, Space it was just the like way I decided to refresh my like skills with uh, uh, with, uh, with, with JavaScript, and that's how it started. 
And of course, the, over these years, the code is terrible because it contains everything from when I started to learn till I kept doing and working. <laughs> Uh, as we will see in the next slide, because I decided to, oh, let's add Elm, because I want to learn now. So I went to uh, Paris, to Disneyland, but also to Elm conference, accidentally, and uh, they were talking about this uh, language programming, and decided, oh, heck yeah, I want to I do something with it. Why not add UI using Elm? That's a genius idea. Uh, this idea still haunts me until today, which I have to update my UI still in Elm and still in point uh, 0.19 version, which is long, like uh, deprecated version, with uh, missing documentation and uh, hackish uh, binaries to track down. Yeah, basically I shot myself in the leg with a shotgun. And then now, speaking about shooting myself in a, with a leg with a shotgun, uh, I chose unsupported indie engine. From a game, so you know they're like they're like Unity. They're like Unreal. <coughs> okay, uh, in interaction. What's like Unity, Unreal? What else can you name of the Indian engines? What? what yeah. Unreal. Unreal. Unreal is unrealistic. Yeah, but yeah, true. Yeah, there are lots of uh, things to choose from, including some nice HTML engines like Phaser, I guess. Uh, no, I decided. Oh, hey, this guy here from Latvia. Uh, he's making an engine? Well, let's, let's do it! <laughs> um, yeah, if you have found, sure, bring it out. Try to Google it. Try finding Meta. <laughs> it's before it was cool, before like Zuckerberg stole it. So, uh, and the documentation is not available for it, and that's not only it. I have to, like, it has, still has bugs, it's not supported. Uh, but to fix bugs, I can't use the GitHub version because for some reason, that version is not working exactly what I want, so I'm using some older uh, compiled version, which I decompiled, and uh, you know how obfuscated code looks like. I hope you know, but it's terrible. Basically, yeah, shooting yourself in the leg. Don't. Tip number three. We're going fast, I think. Uh, so uh, yeah, the game has been released for a while now, uh, like I think to, to 2018, something like that. Uh, I released the game, so when I'm like, still like, you'll see later, I still haven't released it, but I have not released it. It's complicated. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's nuance with it. Uh, I'll probably get into it later, but it's a fact, the game was released in 2018. Uh, it even had uh, like uh, YouTubers playing it, and uh, there's our videos. I still use that video as a reference because I've lost any files and every reference to that version. But that video is still available. So for this uh, talk, I actually uh, screen captured from that version because I have no ability to these uh, assets anymore. Now, I, I have them somewhere in Git history, but <coughs> my Git history is too like big. Uh, yeah, you uh, looking at the game, you may have a question: What's up with that? Like it's ugly, right? It's old school. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the people say it's ugly. I say it's old school. Absolutely. And they just like, yeah. I mean, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's not fair to call it ugly. I find it beautiful. And actually, uh, well, this version is not really mine, so it would be uh, like insulting someone, which we will talk about later, uh, calling it ugly. But the the graphics part has been like a topic of debate <clears throat> when talking about this uh, game. Uh, well, actually, especially in this version, as you can see, it's slightly different. It has the same name, but like looks weirder than in this one. Because uh, it's complicated. Like as most of the things with these games, it's complicated. Uh, this is how the game started out, and you still can see these objects uh, in the screenshots today. Uh, and the uh, elements, it's like hand, hand drawn, right? like drew stuff on the paper. Uh, they used flowmasters, the pencils, and like uh, scanned and like. Like it's a uh, well, media, and it looked like this. Again, as I said, this is actually stolen from that guy's video because I have no reflection of that version anymore. <clears throat> but yeah, it's, this is also space wrecking. It's uh, it was released. Yeah. Uh, but now it looks like this. And uh, what happened? This guy happened. Wait. Well, I I, I should have had this picture here, but uh, it's like Ernest. Uh, I, he came, uh, he said, your game looks ugly, man, you should like uh, do something about it. And uh, I said, no. <laughs> then, she, then he like did something and so like, oh, it, wait, it looks kind of better. So, uh, well, long story short, he's in the team. Uh, you'll hear about Ernest uh, today more, I guess, because uh, uh, 
like, like it's, it's like uh, what do you sell? It's, it's marketing like uh, switching. I'm um, co uh, coupling it with the next talk from Andes uh, later to, uh, this evening. Uh, you'll learn more about it. But yeah, basically, uh, this is the last iteration of the graphics when Ernest came by. But what he did is actually also interesting. Uh, he did not um, like he built on top of my existing art. So what you see here. These tiles actually were not like from the slate, uh, from uh, the drawn, they were overdrawn, like uh, enhanced. So you can still recognize the elements still from the my, still from the my hand uh, drawings. So as I said, graphics are like weird for this game. Uh, yeah, well, something less weird. Uh, character portraits. Uh, one of the characterizing features of the game is like uh, we have these character portraits because um, like in the initially uh, we didn't have I mean then I sort of I was just alone so that I didn't have dialogues uh, with faces they were just like text but it felt like we need something and uh, face and uh, we ended up with um, uh, this somewhat unique style as this one's uh, Good feature, I think. It, it tracks people well. Basically, um, very specific one bit, uh, dithered, low res portrait style. And uh, it, it works pretty well. And it, But it's also needlessly complicated. For example, you may think it's uh, like just a PNG something or not. No, man. like it is PNG. But it's like PNG that contains only one color, not even two colors. I mean, like it con it's like. Uh, a transparent with dots, and then I use that image as a mask because then I put something other in uh, some color on it. So I get like this, like different shades of this, uh, uh, like, like it is needlessly this uh, complicated. <coughs> but the fact is, I need people's faces, and that's a problem because you know, like, your face belongs to you, right? So I had this problem where to get, like, I don't know, like 50, 80 people faces because uh, that's like I need NPCs to talk with in the game and uh, initially as, uh, I sort of stole them from Unsplash but don't do that because uh, I like read about it and I realized it's illegal even though <laughs> it's okay uh, there shouldn't be any more Unsplash faces in the game or on the Steam page I think it'll be moved last time uh, like last week so uh, uh, the illegal part is not that you can't use these pictures. These pictures, like, they have this, uh, in, you can use the unsplash. They say, oh, you can use it. The problem is that you can use a picture, but you can't use the person's likeness. So it's like uh, there is model the lease form, right? So you, the, the model, the person has to the lease its face, uh, their face. <coughs> and, uh, of course, I won't get uh, all of them face uh, this, the leases. So how did I solve it? AI! <coughs> Uh, these faces you see are not real people, these are parts of real people. It's a bit like terrible sounding, like some cut them off in the pieces. But yeah, uh, there are services that generate faces. And one of these services is uh, generated photos. Uh, it's not the only one we use, but this one decided to like, uh, like uh, add us as a use case. Like uh, space like that, like, uh, the space like is using them. In this picture there, you can see uh, uh, another reason why I needed to do this trickery with AI and faces. Uh, that person there is, uh, well, it, she's not a prostitute. She's just a porn star. And that's a problem, because uh, when you use someone's face, and uh, okay, like they might be okay with that, but then you put it on some character that may be a porn star. And like, I have nothing against porn stars, uh, after all, he included her in the game, but like you may not want to be porn star, right? Yeah. So and AI solved that for you because that's someone else, like something uh, like AI don't care for now. All right, let's get next farther. So about uh, RPGs, RPGs have these systems. Um, I don't know how familiar we are with RPGs, but like to really, really tri trivialize, you have uh, dice. You roll, and the number like decides something. Either you win or you lose. And win can mean either you convince somebody, or you steal somebody, or you like hit stronger. So the dice is used as 
sort of an RNG, a random, ele random element to like differentiate the experience. But that's like not all RPGs use uh, randomness. Um, uh, for example, uh, yeah, Fallout New Vegas, it doesn't use random, like specifically for these uh, dialogue speech uh, checks, like you can see that speech is 100. So it's like it's like the end game boss, so you just, uh, hey, uh, if you have 100, then you can just pass it. You click it and it's success, there's no uh, random there. Uh, why I'm talking about it? Because initially space was just like that. We had the system set in stone. You can only like proceed like if it's like skill gates succeed or not. But then we changed it because uh, there's another alternative uh, like also from Fallout because as you know Fallout's like the best RPG or game ever. So uh, 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 with uh, dice rolls where they are like hidden like in the case of Fallout they are hidden but. Um, uh, we use, we always we show them. Point is, uh, our reason for doing that is because early playtesting, and by early I mean like year four or five, uh, it felt like uh, it's it's a bit boring. But you can just build a character and just click through. There's no no excitement, no suspense. So we introduce like we switch the core system. So nothing is simple in this game in a history, I mean like uh, from static checks to like it's, it's like a whole different RPG system there. But yeah, that's another tidbit. Yeah, all of these my uh, not favorite one. I mean all of them are favorite tidbits. But this one's also funny. So big question when you're making game to go with the publisher or not. Usually it's like go with the publisher. Yeah not. So we didn't go. Uh, uh, there were publishers that were reaching out. But we reached out to publishers, there were talks, um, but we sort of decided not to. And uh, yeah, the reason is uh, when, like making a game, like it's, I think I'm gonna finish it, like it feels like complete. So I'm wondering what if I, uh, like publisher takes half of your cut, right? Or even actually more if you, well, how are you look at that? But basically like 50, uh, 30% goes to the publisher. Uh, that's a simplified version, but uh, it feels like, you know, what if you just release the game? You're like, is it, do you really need publisher? I, I, I was thinking for months, do I really need a publisher? What like, uh, what benefit would uh, it bring? What complications mean? So I decided not to go uh, because I would be always wondering, what if I went solo? And now I know. Though, now I'm wondering. What if I went as a publisher? No, really. So again, time with the next talk, we'll learn how it is to go with a publisher. And spoiler alert, it's probably better. Uh, so going without publisher, it means you have to do everything yourself. And uh, in the indie development, there are those things that you have to do. First, like make a game, but that's like given. You have to make the best game ever, and that's like the starting point. Uh, that's just nobody cares. If like you need, to, you just need have perfect game before you start anything else. Apart from that, you need to do marketing because uh, there's like huge market, like hundreds of games coming out, I guess every day, uh, and like adding your game to the popular store like Steam is like taking a bucket of water and throwing it out in a sea. Like nobody cares. So. Uh, if you want anybody to care, you need to do marketing and, uh, uh, well, you don't, if you don't have a budget, then it's a different kind of marketing. Uh, if you do, if you don't have a publisher, like, that's where the publisher actually comes in. Uh, they can uh, help you with that. And not only by money, actually by experience, uh, by uh, contacts, knowing the right people. All of these things I'm telling you that publisher does, I wish I sort of had figured out before because uh, I had to do everything myself. And like, it's not in a good way. So when you're building a house, you don't want to build your house for yourself because it's going to be a crappy house. You want to be someone who knows how to build a house, right? Uh, yeah, but anyways, so this is my like adventures. Um, and my adventures, uh, I needed to do some marketing and uh, the only marketing method that like has worked so far effectively was uh, gifts. So I just 
So it's not marketing, just gifts. So what do you do? Uh, you create funny gifts and post them like hopefully every week on the screenshot of today or some other hashtag. And well, believe it or not, it's actually uh, quite like there's measurable uh, effectiveness. How I know? Because we got money out of a tweet. So yeah, like uh, and that's almost 100% of our budget at that point. And I'm not gonna lie, until the release, it was still 100% of our budget. And the release happened like a year later or something. So basically, yeah, uh, like this tweet you can see, that one went like viral is a strong word. It was, it saw some traction. And uh, it uh, participated in a pitch a game contest, got second place, and some uh, company, hey, gave us money, uh, like as a prize, because they promised, I guess. But that's very nice. <laughs> you know, as I said, there's almost no budget. Uh, but we got a few grant from that. Uh, and where do you spend this grant? Uh, we invested in, uh, so we did uh, voice acting uh, for intro and trailers. You heard the voice, I think it was a pretty nice voice and uh, expensive one. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I tend to listen to it time to time just to increase its uh, ROI. Uh, uh, and also we did some good music, we got some good music from Kyle Misko. Wow, I hate to repeat, but there's also some tie-in with the next talk. Uh, but yeah, basically, Kyle Misko is a great guy. Uh, he he's Ukrainian. He was in Ukraine when the war was started, like the second phase of the war started, and uh, so he actually was making um, tracks for a uh, game when he was stuck in uh, <coughs> bomb shelters. So yeah, but uh, it is a bit divergent. But basically, uh, music investment well spent, like. Well, money well spent. We got uh, uh, good music out of the, those this prize. So, gifts work. Um, yeah, speaking of uh, Ukraine, uh, uh, it uh, gets us to another tricky point. So, with SpaceFact, there are few points of confrontation. Uh, so, I know it's a tiny game, but still, we have these controversies. And uh, Ukraine is one of them. Uh, uh, so, uh, so there was uh, basically when the war started. Uh, well, we, yeah, like, I mean, what I mean, we basically banned the, the Russian audiences, so we like like cut them off, uh, market off. Uh, like, there's no talk about translations to Russian, of course not, but uh, because like. We'll t touch on that later. We don't have any translations, but uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, it's just that uh, it w would be like not available in uh, Russian Steam and uh, Belarusian Steam. Yeah, and uh, well, that caused some uh, controversies, like some reactions, because because uh, uh, well, uh, one thing you should know about uh, Fallout is that Fallout is very popular in uh, Russia. And also Lusophonic, I guess, uh, in inflates spheres, but but very popular in Russia. And actually, there was great traction in uh, Russia some like years before the war when we had like participating contests. Uh, 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 people were interested into that. So uh, well, as you can also see, uh, these are like visits to at uh, March last year to our webpage and well it dominated the United States our primary market but also Russia is like the second one but, but by a gap still so I was wondering what what's going to be the impact because uh, uh, like the forums will f were full like pages tens of pages of uh, toxicity uh, like but but words towards me and stuff like that uh, a, a lot of reaction I wasn't expecting that much of a uh, Negative re I mean, I was expecting negative reaction, but that much of negative reaction. Uh, but it's great because uh, people were, were talking. Like, there was like point of discuss, so like, discussion. So I, I don't mind much. Still, I was wondering what's the impact if you do like if you make an indie game and then make it political. What's happening? Not much. So this is, these are our uh, wish list. Uh, you should know that wish is like currency of indie game. It's not real money. It's like these YouTube bucks in the soft market, so basically nothing. 
Uh, but still, indie developers compare each other with uh, these uh, wish list box. And um, it's like charts, and you can judge how much people care about your game uh, at any given uh, day. Basically, at that day, when everyone was um, hurling uh, insults at me, and the following days, uh, uh, there was, and as they're threatening to remove their wish lists and, uh, and just uh, like delete and block and so on, I got only 16 wish lists that day. I mean, that's good because uh, I mean, like I would expect to like, drop them below zero, but they didn't. So, uh, but still, this topic of uh, war is never going away. It's still coming up. I have negative reviews in Steam after we launched the early access because of that, and I still get uh, negative uh, comments in the forums. But I also get different uh, negative comments for different reasons. Uh, well, that's going to be okay. Uh, this morning, the session, I sort of mixed up this order, so it, uh, for the more dramatic impact, it should have been the next controversy, but I sort of dropped in this slide. Uh, so, it's, it's awkward. Uh, so, uh, Spacework is a um, uh, small game, intentionally <coughs> short. Like, uh, well, I mean, short is like five hours. Uh, that's, that's my intention. Uh, but, uh, uh, but it's intentional, as in you have to, rep no, you have to, you can replay, because you can do, like, I won't say anything, but you can do many things, uh, it's uh, quite free, you can replay it and get different, like, different stories, different paths, and even story, like, branches significantly, depending on your, I wouldn't call it even a choice, basically, in your game, like, uh, and that's another, like, thing about the game that also comes up in discussions, people are concerned about their lengths. But yeah, it's a short game, but it's actually a big game. So because in the Steam reviews there's like, um, like guys saying, yeah, okay, like there are some issues with the game, uh, 42 hours uh, like recorded, or, or or one other guy who is uh, playing demo said, okay, I'm in an eight hour of uh, one hour long demo, and I'm wondering how long is the full game, <laughs> and like, like five hours, five hours, man. Keep it close, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's intentional. Another like thing about this game. Yeah. So here is the controversy. Yeah. Oh, like that was awkward positioning. Uh, let's let's do you do the job. What do you think? What's the controversy here? What's so controversial in this screen? Yeah, you're quick about it. So um, surprisingly, well, I, I I wasn't thinking like that when I added the third gender apparently. I would call it certain angle, actually, it's, it's tricky if anyone wants to discuss this. Uh, this is also a more uh, uh, ex expanded description after like hours and days of discussions and uh, also it generated a ton of traffic. Uh, but yeah, we have a like a sort of uh, not male, not female option. And uh, well, this is awkward. It was not intended like that. There was not like like political statement. Uh, uh, which is just like, I wanted to make so that uh, males are always strong, plus one strength, like physical, and that females are plus one charm, charming, nice, right? But then I was thinking, what if I'm female, but let's consider herself ugly, or I don't know, weak man, like, like you. So, uh, <laughs> or, or maybe you don't, like, like, it's like boxing you in, and this game's about freedom, uh, I just add uh, option. What if you say, when you say, are you male or female? And you say, nah. <laughs> That's what it is. This uh, should have called it man. If, uh, but uh, yeah, it's N. It's something you, when you have a choice, but you just don't make a choice. It's very like organic and uh, humane, right? Uh, but yeah. Uh, I had to like expand it a bit, so apparently it's like something asexual. Uh, when you were like, uh, I'm, I'm bringing up this. Uh, can you give me an example of uh, some popular cultural character uh, that would be defined as meh and? Because I, I can, I can. It's just like testing you. Maybe you know. Can the author call some big movie? Okay. <laughs> Maybe uh, Bimo from the from the later time. 
Okay. Yeah. Loki like, can be both. So much. Loki can be both. Yeah. Well, yeah actually, it's, it's closer. Yeah. A cowboy bebop, like, it's like not exactly masculine impression. Like, it's pretty. Uh, so the end doesn't mean like you are not male, you are you are not female. You just, nah, like maybe, maybe not. Like, it's it's not like limitations. So, another point of controversy, it still comes up in Steam reviews, still comes up in forums, we are getting battered about this, uh, like, we, we are not getting, like, good ratings out of this game, because of, A, Ukraine, well, to be honest, that's not against, because of Russia, and B, because of the N, and I can't even name the, the damn thing, uh, because, you know, when they asked, uh, I get this tricky question in the forums, Okay, okay, this should this should be simple wattage. Uh, how many genders are there? And I'm like three. <laughs> you, 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 you can't answer good like there's no good answer to this question. You're gonna like shoot yourself in the I don't know, just not the legs with like all over like load yourself in a cannon and shoot in another cannon and shoot back. Uh, just but still, we like we did it, and now we are sticking to it, and we are like embracing it because like there's no way back, man. Anyway, uh, we are nearing it. Oh, you said I promised like ten points. It's like eleven points. Sorry, or, or maybe more. So uh, uh, another thing about uh, the game is that it's uh, in English. Yeah, well, obviously it's in bad English because like I'm not native speaker, and uh, when you tend to write hundred fifty thousand words, which is approximately how many, we, how much we have, I'm not, I don't know for sure, because it's hard to calculate, I have like a script that does that for me, but it's not precise, but basically a lot, it's like a, it's, it's like a small book, or big book, it's called uh, Other Dimensions, but, you know, uh, but uh, everyone agrees it's a lot, and uh, I can't translate that, and I have even coded it, like, without localization in my mind, so it means it's a Crap, scrap everything out. Still, it's in English. And uh, still, but we have the like names like Flypad in it because uh, uh, and why we do this because it's alien and weird for anglophones. <laughs> uh, I'm not kidding. This is the reason. Uh, I don't know. When you played games in your childhood, uh, I guess there were like names of the spaceships or cities or characters, I don't know, Jonia, like character John. It was, it was a very common name for me in childhood. But it's it's not sort of local name. Uh, so I was wondering how uh, how would they feel if I did that to them? <laughs> and now it's my time for execution. And I'm not kidding. This is the reason. Uh, I wanted to make a game that is somewhat popular, uh, that people would play with Spirit Dynasty, that's one of the pronunciations of uh, this name. For those who are actually native English speakers, I'm, I'm sorry for you guys, it's a Spiridis. But Spirit Dynasty, it's a very nice version, I like it, and it's very popular for some reason uh, in the YouTube ads. Uh, uh, spray. Anyway, there are many versions of that, uh, but yeah, I wanted to make the world alien. Well, it's also a sort of lore thing, because uh, the things happening actually happen in the, like, uh, in a part of the space controlled by small companies from, like, Baltic States, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, and, like, expats that made some startups in California that flew in the space. It's complicated, but it's in the game. You can read all about it. Um, yeah, I miss, I'm still missing Latvian language, which is like mind-boggling. Like, it, it's broken English and not even Latvian. But it is what it is. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, my previous game uh, was only in Latvian. And by doing that game, I like decided, okay, next game, well, I'm going to do English. Because like, I can do write English as uh, free as in Latvian, so it's just easy. But I'm going to do it in English so I can share uh, GIFs on it. Uh, because, like, otherwise, people, like, share the game. I can share it with, uh, professionally. Went with English, but now I'm missing Latvian. Like, story of my life. So, what's next? And we are nearing uh, the end of the discussion. <coughs> and uh, release it again. As you know, I released it, like, 2018. 
on Ichio. Uh, it's not available there anymore. I released a couple of versions there just testing audiences and uh, just uh, really trashed up the account. Uh, but then I also released the demo version, yearly access demo version. Uh, I can't say a full release because um, I was planning to do an early, uh, that build was supposed to be an early access version, like a, like a game version to be released. But uh, uh, then Steam Next Fest suddenly appeared and they said, hey, show me your demos. And we thought, oh, we don't have a demo. Oh, it's demo now. So uh, the ELE Access build, what was supposed to be ELE Access, was rebranded as a demo and the least. Uh, but it, like, it's uh, like quite big, so it's, it's more like ELE Access as it's supposed to be. Then I released ELE Access like last year, and, and it's like 100% of the game. Uh, yeah, but you can like just go play. Uh, I think it's even. It's in uh, Steam sale today, and it's even available there. You can buy it. <laughs> um, uh, and there are all these things I was talking about, is there inside. But like, the plan is to release a full version and have to do it before, uh, like before the summer ends. Because, uh, do you know why? Do you have any like, hypothesis why do I need to release my game before <laughs> summer ends? <laughs> Because what? Before fall? Before fall, yeah. <laughs> because everybody goes inside. Yeah, it's like it's going to be, if I release it, it'll be out. Before um, school ends. Sorry? Before school ends. So the schoolers can go. Uh, no, but like, interesting aspect. My, 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 my target audience is actually like old people like for me, like so ancient, so, like, uh, because they like so-called... So, so after school starts then? Nice one. <laughs> no, it's because uh, Starfield, Bethesda's uh, next big thing is releasing on uh, September 6th and... Uh, it uh, won't release until like, 10 years. So well, they will okay. release. <laughs> but yeah, I would be like decimated if I decided to release any anywhere near that, so I have to do that. But yeah, here's my like. Don't take this advice, but basically, I will always be releasing. That's it, and uh, I can take questions. Yeah. Okay. Here you go. So about the last slides. So maybe make a release and then uh, like regular updates or something like. You mean like what I've been doing for the last three, four years? <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we released the ELE Access demo version, it meant uh, the game was available as a demo. It was called demo, but it was ELE Access. So it was sort of a full game with multiple solutions, with multiple endings and multiple everything. Uh, uh, and we supported it, we adding updates. Uh, since then we have added a lot of updates. <clears throat> Content, gameplay, you name it. We, we keep adding it, uh, we still do. So I hope to not add updates after the full version. That would be something new. <laughs> yeah, yeah? How did you avoid the temptation of starting a new project for seven years? Because I've been doing that. It's those seven years before that. <laughs> so uh, uh, I've, I've been making games for a while now, and uh, probably decades. like. It before I got a computer, and uh, trust me, well, I know it's hard to believe, but I've made a lot of uh, unfinished games. <laughs> and I don't think it's the, the real name, uh, the word is uh, made. They are. <laughs> um, the, the finished games, I can count really on one, on the fingers of one hand. Like, <laughs> well, if you count this finished, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know how much you would charge for a game for? Again, what? Do you know how, you, how much you would charge for a game for? Or it will be free? Oh, it's available now. Fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, but if you buy like... Now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 10% of... See, yeah, uh, well, actually, that's an interesting tidbit. I have a wish list already. Oh, thank you, man. Like wish as a stop, like like wish list. The security as indie devs give you nothing, but makes you feel better. Uh, so uh, about the price point, uh, it's a good question in a sense that um, I sort of worked up 
uh, I did, like, because I don't have a publisher, I have no idea how that exactly Steam works. Like, I have approximate uh, idea how it works, but like, it's very complicated and bad UI. So uh, I sort of pressed the release button, and then some people told me, "Hey, you have these old prices." I mean, what old prices? Apparently, Steam had changed something in their like UI that like adjusted the price in local price. Basically, long story short. Uh, my game is way cheaper in some regions because I like didn't press another button and <laughs> changing that means I can't do many things if I change. Also, I sort of changed these prices, but then it says uh, I sort of uh, like submitted them and it has this uh, warning that I have to do something, but it, I sort of have done. I don't know. I, I'm, oh, I'm, uh, I'm scared to touch it uh, because it's the sale. Uh, you can't change prices like two weeks or some, two months. I don't know, sometime before the sale. So I'm a bit scared to touch it, and it's available uh, on, uh, unfairly cheap in some regions. Uh, well, not in Russia. Uh, any more questions? Yeah, here then. Um, I have a question about localization. Have you tried uh, exploring some automated tools or services? AI. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, automated tools. Uh, what do you mean, like by that? A bit in specific. I don't know. Google Translate, for example. Oh no! Oh, oh yeah. Like, I, I, I love the idea. I actually it would be maybe like simpler for me to like on fly, uh, like some uh, add some translator that translates on fly because I I don't know I didn't add this but Spacebook is actually a web application and by that mean. But I, I mean, it's it's a basically a Chrome browser which you install on your on your computer along with your Chrome browser <laughs> and you other Chrome browsers like Slack and VS Code and many Spotify. I guess. Uh, basically, it's a uh, it's a browser, so I could maybe on the fly request something and translate be uh, simpler than just have a translation. Uh, but about these automated translations, uh, I don't. <coughs> Like, I, I mean, I, I suspect that it might be not very good. I mean, like, the, uh, from the sense of flow, says the man who has, like, English, uh, English uh, available, uh, bad grammar and everything. But, yeah, uh, I haven't explored that. And I, because of the suspicion, it, uh, I would love to be, like, uh, better, like, quality-wise, uh, like the humans read. So that's the reason why no. And also, I have to invest in tools. Yeah, there. Does Does Steam have a review team that reviews the code of your games when you publish? I don't think so. So they do game review, like. Um, also, there's a funny story. I'm talking security related stuff. Uh, no, no, I think you can sneak a lot of crap inside. <laughs> and I guess they have automated <laughs> tools, uh, something that they like for the most obvious. Well, or known well, but I think you can sneak. I was wondering about that too, but uh, they took my bill and it was not good. <laughs> I was worried about it, but they just meh. Uh, so yeah, the funny story about that uh, Steam, uh, they have you like uh, you can sneak in viruses, but they very like they don't care about that. I guess not much, but uh, but uh, God forbid, uh, there's some sort of sexual content that is not aligned with their guidelines. Like, sexual content is fine, apparently, but you have to, like, mark it and so So I submitted the game, and they have to add this in the form, if I have some nudity or something, so I added a phrase that, that are, like, you can have sex with other people, there are, like, three genders, like... <laughs> 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 and they got naturally curious. I would, too, like, probably. Uh, and they were like, hey, uh, how can we see that? Like, no, not like that. We need to verify. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm saying, but, uh, but guys, I'm, I'm telling you, there is some sexual content. Thing. We need to see how much. <laughs> Long story short, they need to see. So um, I said, okay, uh, well, it's a complicated uh, sequence of events that lead. Like, you can't just. So barge in a room and have sex with some NPC, man. You guys, like, it's, it's, it's a game, it's a world, it's an NPC. Uh, they say, okay, but perhaps you can work in something. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, and I am like, okay, I'm gonna work in, uh, sh like, backdoor. 
So added it back during the game. I think I haven't removed it yet. Basically, if you press some certain combination of uh, buttons, it uh, creates a certain character that puts it <coughs> in a certain place and starts a dialogue with a certain NPC. And then you have, can have sex with that NPC. <laughs> so if you push it, it's like, nice. <laughs> so, I guess on this uh, bombshell we can also end and uh, give a chance to the next uh, lecture. Okay, Go. let's let you have the end of the Question? I, I don't think it's like more like comment. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you.